So now we are recording again. So hi, what's your name? <laughs> My name is Tony Epple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, the really owner of this fantastic venue here. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and you're here, our live audience. <laughs> So, so if something if something is broken, it's probably my Wi-Fi, and <laughs> you can blame me. And I'm really glad to have Stephen and and Sebastian here tonight and um, talk a little bit about Duke Script and other stuff. Okay, cool. So, uh, what's Duke Script? If you are a Java developer and you don't know anything about it, how would you describe it? Um, Duke Script is a single source cross platform technology for um, for creating java based applications that simply run anywhere so so basically the idea was um, to to bring back the good times i 'm a swing developer i 'm a swing developer and uh, back back in the time oh, I can of hear some noise from the audience <laughs> swing, yeah who else is who else is swing developer <laughs> and and actually I liked swing a lot. I'm probably one of the few <laughs> persons, but I really liked Swing a lot uh, because it, it made it possible to deploy to all the relevant platforms. And um, at one point in time, it wasn't possible anymore to deploy to all of the relevant platforms and because people in invented new platforms and uh, they wouldn't run Java. Um, and that was bas basically the big problem um, where we said we have to change something about that. Yeah, and you said um, to, to run Duke Script basically anywhere. So what's yes. anywhere? Anywhere the means the relevant desktop platforms like Linux, OS X, Windows. Um, the uh, mobile platforms, mm -hmm. at least the most important ones, um, which is iOS and Android. Mm -hmm. And also browser. Because um, even, I, I mean, Java basically got kicked out of the browser due to uh, the security issues with applets. And um, at one point, um, nobody used them anymore. And, and right now, uh, Oracle even officially discontinued support for applets. So browser, this means you can um, run Java, you can write Java, and it runs as HTML and JavaScript? Um, yes, in a way. Wow. So basically, what, what we said, we, we want to have it uh, running uh, in, in the browser without the need of having a plugin. So you do not have a real uh, Java virtual machine, but something uh, else, or a very small implementation of a uh, Java virtual machine. And there are actually a couple of projects who do that. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, TVM, then there's a project that's called, I think, Doppio, and then there's a project called Back to Browser, by um, by Jaroslav Tulach, and that was actually the project that originally started the whole Duke Script stuff. So having something that runs in the browser and uses HTML for rendering, because we didn't want to have the we, we didn't want to re-implement Swing and the whole Java virtual machine, but s just a small profile good enough to run uh, Java applications and use Java syntax, Java editors, and everything, and uh, use HTML as a lightweight rendering technology. Well, that somehow sounds like run, uh, write runs once, run anywhere again, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> Very good, I like that. We're back to that, yes. Okay, um, you brought us a short presentation. Yeah, I thought I'd, 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 I'd go through a, through a couple of slides to uh -huh. explain the, uh, the basics, how it works on the different platforms. Sounds good. So we okay. will switch to this. So basically, this is where we started from. Have you switched already? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, this is where we started from. All the new devices there, no Java on there, and um, we wanted to change that. Um, we wanted to have Java as the rock-solid uh, technology that allows you to create modular uh, and, and large applications, and we wanted to be able to use HTML, uh, HTML5 for rendering, because it's not only very lightweight, it's also available everywhere on all the devices, um, and it's, it's got lots of tools, it's got uh, tons of libraries that you can use, and so it's very well understood. So it also allows us to, to create a really nice designer-developer workflow, because designers really know how to produce uh, HTML. Web de there are tons of web designers' right. resources that, that can create the UI for you. And so we put that together, and that's also where our logo is coming from. So it's Java uh, Duke, 
with uh, the HTML5 uh, logo. And that's where JavaScript, uh, uh, Duke script comes from. <laughs> um, and it works like that. You need a JVM and you need an HTML5 renderer. And Duke script just glues them together as a thin layer in mm. between. So we have a, th uh, we have a very uh, thin um, platform specific layer. And um, you have, otherwise, you take what you got already on the machine. So on desktop, we're using Hotspot, and currently we're using the JavaFX web view. Um, but we, uh, we also have alternatives already um, because the web view is slightly lagging behind the most current version of WebKit. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go for something else. Um, on Android, we have uh, Android WebKit web view and just the regular Dalvik art. And on iOS, there's also a component. Currently, we're using RoboVM, but with uh, JDK 9, we will probably be able to r use the open uh, JDK uh, yeah. JVM. Yay! <laughs> and uh, not um, a JVM that is owned by Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really weird, yeah. <laughs> Currently, Microsoft is probably the only, are the, are the only guys offering uh, uh, yeah, and well, well, there's there's still Hotspot on uh, by Oracle on on iOS used inside uh, Math, I think. But other than that, uh, yeah, open that is this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. So it's already there. Oracle already has a JVM that runs on iOS, um, but uh, it's not publicly available or just only only when you use some certain uh, tools. Um, uh, yeah, and in, in the browser, we basically have two options, back to browser, that is one of the, that is the original JVM that uh, uh, Jaroslav Tulach developed, and uh, TVM, that's an alternative version that is slightly more performant at the moment. I don't know. So it could also run an ARM processor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm. I've got a version running on on the Raspberry Pi as well. So we've got Duke script running on the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. And. Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> the more JVMs we have, the more platforms we can we can use. That's that's fantastic. And uh, we only need a very small profile of Java. So um, back to browser does not have the full Java API. It does not even have the, there are these, um, these profiles. Um, what do you call them? The compact profiles, right? The compact profiles where you have only the core APIs and stuff like that. We are compact zero. <laughs> Just yeah, exactly. You have, to, you have to ask me questions. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> think about questions hard, really hard Everybody now. Wants to have a cool <laughs> presence we have here. You Sorry have to ask a question now. <laughs> audience, you can't get presents. Miro, right now. <laughs> okay, no. Um, keep on thinking. Um, yeah, and and we we really can can create a really nice designer developer workflow via that because um, we have really decoupled the view and uh, the business logic. Yeah. So what you can you do You don't want to have coding designers and uh, designing developers, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Doesn't work. <laughs> and even, uh, I mean, um, Windows, uh, uh, Microsoft is, 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 is not so bad in that they had the, um, uh, they invented the model view, view model pattern. Mm -hmm. um, and that decouples view and view model. And the view model doesn't know anything about the view or the view to technology. And we are following that same pattern. Um, hmm? No. GVT is, is programming with widgets. So if you're using widgets, you haven't decoupled the view uh, from the view model. MVVM. Um, uh, model view, view model. And um, 
Uh, where was I? <laughs> Designer and developers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, so what you're doing is is you're programming only logic and you're working with properties, but you're not working with widgets. It's even I'm, I mean, JavaFX um, has something similar. They already have um, um, a declarative format, the FXML for declaring the views, and they have a controller. And they just inject basically the, the widgets into the controller, uh, and, and they have some decoupling. But it's not really very cleanly decoupled because they are missing the, uh, the two-way binding in the FXML. It was originally planned for, but uh, they, they did not yet uh, fully implement it. But it would be nice to have it because it would be make the software much more testable, and it would make it uh, uh, the, the controller wouldn't have to know anything about a button or something like that. So right now, it knows about buttons, labels, and stuff like that. So the designer cannot simply change this to something else. And we have a cleaner separation of that. So we can really change. Uh, we, we, we do not have a label or something, a label widget that we refer to, but we have a string. And if you bind something else to this string, you're, you're fine. So the designer and the developer are basically uh, independent of each other. So Sounds that's good. just just for a for a short introduction. Mm -hmm. I don't <laughs> want to make the theoretical part too long. But you will show some code examples later. Yes, as well. yes, sure. Very good. I guess we should go to coding now because this is called mm. night hacking and not exactly. night presenting. No, yeah, not <laughs> night, uh, night slides <laughs> and uh, powerpointing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have a well, we have really good support for NetBeans. So if you want to create an application, we have a NetBeans plugin. And uh, you can use that. There's a new wizard if you use the plugin. And depending on the network connection, the. Okay. This is my network, so it should, it should really work now. <laughs> so yeah, you can't blame this the is the point. Like this <laughs> is the point where we have to cut <laughs> <laughs> the video. <laughs> we cut the now we are right back. <laughs> Yes, of course. That's a question. I would like to try Duke script. Yes. I actually, it's on my plan for half year. Okay, cool. So, but uh, what about plugin for IntelliJ? Is it planned? Uh, no. Okay. It's not really planned. Do do you have to use IntelliJ? Well, no. Why why do you yeah. use it? <laughs> 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 yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay, like IntelliJ, IntelliJ is a really nice uh, um, IDE. Currently, we have a um, plugin for NetBeans, and we have instructions for Eclipse, how to use it. <laughs> so you can find instructions for how to use it with Eclipse. But basically, what we have is Maven archetypes. Okay. So if, you, if you're actually able to use, um, to use IntelliJ together with Maven... Yes. Of course. You can do that. Because okay. I tried. I wanted to write a tutorial, and I was not able to create a Maven project with, uh, with IntelliJ because I didn't find, find it actually very intuitive. So, <laughs> so I, I mean, you, you, must, you must know. I tried with Eclipse, and I managed to do it. I tried with IntelliJ, and I didn't. <laughs> But I don't want well to do I IDE bashing. It's probably that. a really <laughs> nice. It's IntelliJ <laughs> works really well. With it's, a, <laughs> it's probably a really nice IDE. It's just, just not very easy to use for NetBeans users. <laughs> let's let's put it like that. But if well you can we, help me, we don't want to start an IDE war here. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> if you if you want to help me with it, um, if you want, if you can show me how to uh, create the Maven project, then I will write a tutorial, so we can write a blog post together. Cool, yeah. because I was looking for somebody to show me how to do Maven projects, really, <laughs> because oh, I don't want to exclude uh, IntelliJ users. I can also show you. <laughs> okay, it, it works. Great, I've fantastic. Done it times. I'm happy, but I have, I have more questions. sure. Okay, so okay, I have a robot. Yeah. And I would like to write the interface for that. So actually, right now I'm running remotely from the Lego. Yeah. Mindstorm the JavaFX. Uh -huh. engine, so I'm controlling all this stuff, the sensor. Is it possible to nicely do it in a Duke script? That's Probably, yes, sure. Yeah. Should be possible. Depends. Uh, uh, depends. Do you want to run it on, on, on what platforms do you want to run the interface? On Java. 
I'm running on my uh, Lego Mindstorm right now, Java 8 and yeah. 9. I just built it for IMM. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we will be able to do that. Sure. <laughs> cool. Yes, robots. That's that's very good. Duke Scribner and robots. Next step. So, um, so if you step through the wizard, you can decide what platforms you want to deploy to. Um, so just now for the demo, I just uh, use the desktop version. Uh, not in the wizard actually, but in the source code, I can enlarge it for you. Um, so you can decide what uh, what archetype you want to use. So we have two basic archetypes. One of the archetypes is creating a CRUD uh, application with a server and a client and the REST-based in uh, uh, interface, address book sample. And the other one is very basic. It just creates uh, an empty application. And if you want, you can also uh, add some sample code. That helps you with learning. And on the DukeScript website, we have some, um, some more information. I'll, I'll walk through the, the demo code and everything. So you can really understand each line of code very easily. So it's a very nice way to get started, and I'll use that. Okay, now you created something. Could you explain briefly what that um, NetBeans plugin does internally f with your project? The NetBeans plugin only uh, configures the Maven archetype. Oh. So you can everything you want you can do here with the uh, with the NetBeans plugin. You can also do with the Maven archetype. So the wizard just helps you uh, getting the Maven uh, settings right. So you could also use the command line and Vim. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. No problem. Just kidding. Yeah, if you want to do that, there are people who do that. So what you get created here is a, a parent module, and in this case, uh, two child modules. This is the one uh, with the code, um, the general client code here. And um, in there, you'll have a web page, index HTML, and this is where the UI is defined. So here, we've just got a uh, regular HTML page with some CSS on top. CSS animations, and then you've got here a heading, an input, some buttons, and uh, here a diff with, uh, with some spans. And what is non-standard is this here, the data binds. And here, in this example, we are using uh, knockout bindings to um, bidirectionally bind the elements of the HTML page to the view model, which is written in Java. So if you see here, for example, you have text input is bound uh, to the message property of the view model. Um, we can also, since uh, we, we also have a working prototype that works with Angular bindings instead, so these are knockout bindings, we can also work with Angular bindings. Um, and uh, I'll switch over to the to the data model so you can see the property, how the property is defined and how the data model is defined. So here, in the data model class, I have this model annotation. So I said I can I can increase the font and I should be able to do that, but I don't know how to do it actually in in um, in Windows. No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> because my Mac is broken and I have to use this crappy Windows <laughs> machine here <laughs> as a replacement. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's I'm in the mood. Okay. Okay. So this should be nicer. So here you see the message property is defined as part of this model annotation. Mm -hmm. So you have the model annotation. This will create a class for you, the class data. And uh, here are some properties. And one of them is message, and one of them is rotating. We decided to do that as uh, annotations in order to save you from having to write uh, getters and setters and, huh? <laughs> and constructors and stuff like that. <laughs> And this means uh, as soon as you build your project, you create these... Um 
Yeah, actually, it's, it's Java classes. Um, these Java classes mm -hmm. are created in the background for you. All the modern IDEs uh, support mm -hmm. that, even Eclipse. And <laughs> but originally, it would be a Maven plugin which um, does that for you. Um, it's an annotation processor in the background, and all the modern IDEs support that. So if I want to have a new property, and I hit save, and um, I use the generated class data. Let me see. Here, a new data is created. Mm -hmm. I can right away say, is new property or set new property. So the IDE will pick up. That works in IntelliJ, in, yeah. uh, in Eclipse as well. You need a plugin in Eclipse to, uh, to make annotation processors work. Um, in Maven projects, um, but it's described on, on, on our website how you, how you can do that. So what you do is basically you create your view model here, and then you say apply bindings. And apply bindings basically uh, makes sure that uh, the, the elements in the web's web page are bound to the properties of your data model. That's the moment where the page where the view is loaded and then you bind it and, and it will respond and you can see that. Um, let's go back to the view and have a look here. So you can see I bind the text input to the message property here. And um, a bit further down I use this for each binding which loops over array uh, over array properties, array type properties, and uh, for each of the words I do something. And actually the words depends on the message, and you can see that again in the data model. The words property is a computed property. So it's annotated as computed property, and it depends on message. So whenever the message changes, this computed property will also update. And uh, you can see the logic in here. You can see here, um, well, I'll split it, the message uh, at white spaces. So let me just run the project. And then you can see how it plays together. So jump over the first invocations. So here I've got this hello world from HTML and Java. And when I change something, <coughs> you see NetBeans stops at the breakpoint. And the message now is this new message. Okay? And since our elements here are bound to the individual words, you can see the, the exclamation mark is now vanished. So I'll remove the breakpoint and we can say hello Munich because today I'm in Munich, as always. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. So okay. we get kind of reactive programming uh, for HTML pages with Java in this case. Yeah, yeah, a question. How many threads are running behind? Is it the whole application in the one thread? Um, it it depends. You can have multi-threaded applications for desktop applications, for Android and iOS applications. If you run in the browser, you have to write single-threaded applications. Okay. So, y uh, but you will have more threads behind. Yes. To take longer. Okay. So, and you can do stuff with CSS, animations, stuff like that. I have. I, I didn't get the question. For this, for the CSS file, for example, yeah. the consumer who consumes only the CSS files and then produce some result for a website. Okay. Uh, still, can you reform? <laughs> can you rephrase the question? Okay. So, when you pr make a CSS file, yes, you make it. Uh, you you will like to deploy it on your project. Yeah. So, is for this. 
CSS file responsible separate thread and then synchronize the result, translate into the Java, and then build up? Oh, no, no. This is, uh, this is basically using the... Um, this is using the, the, the browser, basically, okay. for the rendering. The rendering is totally happening in the browser, and is uh, the, the, HT the rendering engine is responsible for, okay, for the rendering. Okay, perfect. So you have separated. Yes. Oh, cool. So we have to synchronize between, uh, between the view logic and between what happens in the browser. Yeah, if you want to ask questions. OK. So, um, so this is basically how it's working. And you can use uh, CSS frameworks. Um, for example, chocolate chip UI is something that you would use if you want to deploy to mobile devices, because it really has some nice controls, uh, like, like list controls that look uh, uh, native on Android and iOS. Not perfectly native, but uh, uh, pretty close. So. If if you're not a developer, you will not think it's a really shitty application <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> so basi basically, you are sending everything to the front end, so a much more healthy usage of the front end than the browser would be. Yes. Perfect. Um, okay. So. The question, or rather the comment, was: So you are maximizing. So we are maximizing uh, the use of the of the browser of the view in that case, and and that's that's the case. Yes, that's right. <laughs> but you're not allowed to take something from the back for that. <laughs> 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 I can I can give I can I have giveaways as well. <laughs> so uh, sure. <laughs> so uh, I'll bring some giveaways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have some even more giveaways. Sorry for everybody who is watching the live uh, stream and online. You can't get any giveaways. Next time you would have to come where the next night hacking tour station is. So you have some. It really pays to come here. <laughs> <laughs> so here are. <laughs> <laughs> so I pu put some stuck <laughs> stuff in the back. Uh, they are not so exciting, I guess. <laughs> so it's probably very useful if you have to do some metric stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, sure. How much? How much static methods you use? We are using lots of static methods because what we are doing is we are creating instances of the view model objects, mm -hmm. and these are um, basically delegating back. Um, so in delegating back to static methods. So um, okay. if you have, um, for example, if you click on a button, mm -hmm. what happens is in the view model there is a method uh, turn animation on. And this method yep. delegates to this method here, turn animation on, and uh, is passed in as an argument. Mm -hmm. So in the view model, we're using a lot of these static methods. Okay. But they are basically um, um, getting their states as an mm -hmm. th their state as an argument. Okay. So it's 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 a workaround because we do not want to uh, uh, because we inject uh, or we create the the methods in the in the view model. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Great. So um, some news. Just today, we announced version one dot three uh, of uh, the HTML Java APIs, or what what we announced. Uh, actually, uh, it, this is part of of the NetMeans platform. So it's um, it's actually an Oracle product. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Oracle has, um, has these NetBeans um, HTML for Java APIs, and they are the basis. Um, and they allow you to run the application in the browser and on desktop. And uh, um, we at Dukov uh, just create the presenters for iOS and Android and the tooling. 
So the plugin is 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 basically our work, and but the basic technology is is, is part of NetBeam. Okay, and uh, we've got a couple of nice new features because um, it it now plays better with OSGI. Uh, so inside of OSGI, because some people use DukeScript inside OSGI applications. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got some extensions that make it easier to work with JavaScript frameworks. So the view models allow um, non-mutable properties, basically. Um, and we introduced them in order to be basically better compatible with uh, Oracle Chat which is a really nice uh, new Oracle uh, open source project, um, a JavaScript um, framework. And uh, it, it's compatible with DukeScript, so we can uh, create, we can use their widgets and everything uh, inside DukeScript applications. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, he, he must be happy because I'm, I'm promoting NetBeans and Oracle Chat, two of his <laughs> uh, most favorite projects. <laughs> and DukeScript. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's too good to get sure. you on, by the way. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> All right, uh, what else uh, do you want to show us? Um, yeah, my, my latest pet project is um, embroidery. And I don't know if you've, s if you've shown the my sewing machine. Yet, so um, a I sewing got machine, okay. Yeah. And wha wha what does it do? Okay, this is for machine embroidery. Yeah, we want to see something. Okay, Please yeah. Show us a Should I show it directly? Okay. Yeah, a, a okay. live example. I think right. this is the most interesting. Okay, cool. So um, what I did is I refactored. Uh, I re-engineered the, the format that this machine um, can read. It's called DST file, and, but there's not much information out there about how these DST files work. Um, so I took the, li the, the, the information and, and reverse-engineered some of the, of the files that I found on the internet, some of the designs that I found on the internet. Apparently and they don't never know anything about standards. <laughs> no, no, it's 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 absolutely a de facto standard. This this file format, it's just not documented. <laughs> <laughs> That's why documentation is important. So I created a little Duke script application that can um, that can write DST files, and and um, right now it's tracing basically it's converting um, SVG paths into uh, Bezier curves and does some some math, and uh, writes out these DST files with the individual stitches. And I'll have to prepare a piece of <laughs> <laughs> this. I hope it works, because it's the first time that I'm using this, uh, this fleece here. together. So the file I created is on the USB key. No, I, d I haven't put my project on GitHub yet because the code quality is not yet very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> I'm able to write exactly one design file, one very specific one. Uh. So. Okay, that should work. And now, uh, to make sure that... Uh, I think this is the sur first time when we have a sewing machine on night hacking, right? <laughs> Probably. So let's see how that works out. Okay. My new <laughs> business model, absolutely. Exactly, new business model. <laughs> Tony Apple's sewing machines. <laughs> so I'll choose the design. And oh, 
And off we go. You can come here. <laughs> you can see it live if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be like the Japanese, nothing against Japanese. That was to be expected. He's back really cool, it somehow looks like a 3D printer. Really faster. So I simplified the design a little bit and faster. <laughs> to be a bit faster for this. Not yet, not <laughs> yet. <laughs> it's going to be a big success. But you know, I'm going to do that a lot <laughs> in the next time because... Soon every t-shirt of Tony will have a cool logo. <laughs> yeah, and it will, it will be the Duke Script logo, yes. So the folks around here can probably already guess what that will be. <laughs> no, it works. <laughs> awesome. Tony made an amazing job. Thank you. Yeah, really. You hired. <laughs> <laughs> I think Singer should get really interested in. It's my better. <laughs> so the next step will be to have an editor <laughs> so you can create SVG. Uh, you can draw SVG on the iPad or something like that and then uh, create uh, the file directly. Unfortunately, this machine here doesn't have a direct interface, so you cannot just upload it. You can only upload it via USB key, but we're working on that. <laughs> <laughs> then you can sue in the, cl uh, in the cloud or something. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is really awesome. So it's almost ready now. So it will just add a couple of fingers, and that's it. Version 2 could be a bit faster. <laughs> yeah, I think that's not a Duke script problem, but a problem of the sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a performance problem. <laughs> <laughs> this is well done. Ready. Okay, now so have I'll have to show the design in the camera, yeah. right? Yeah. Everybody wants to see it. Now everybody see what that is. Yeah. That is really cool. We have now a Duke with an HTML5 logo. That's the Duke script logo, right? Yay! <laughs> On our piece Never of cloth. forget it. <laughs> it's embroidered in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so you basically can see the, the different versions um, that I created. <laughs> so some of them, so I, I really have to figure out, because these sewing machines are, are very, very sensitive uh, to, um, so... So you can can see the first one to the left is already, uh, is, is, is I, I, I made some, some mistakes in the calculations. So, for example, the five here is, is, is off. And this one is already a little bit better. And then I tried satin stitches, which is a different stitch. Um, and, uh, but I, but, but uh, it didn't work well because it gets too bulky here on the back. So I decided for now to go with this version. So this is uh, the version here is the, the same that we just made. And uh, to the left, I removed the, um, the spare, um, mm -hmm. the spare faden, Thread. threads, yeah, threads. <laughs> okay, great. Very cool. Yeah, actually pretty Thanks for the live demo. Thank you. Only five calculation to make this happen. <laughs> You're pretty good in calculation. Yeah, it's the, the, the difficult part is, is really converting, uh, finding 
equally spaced dots on Bezier path. That's uh, some iterative process. And I have forgotten all my math already from, from school, so I had to relearn <laughs> all of that stuff. <laughs> but it was fun. So uh, for all kids watching here, this is a really cool application of why math is important. Yeah, linear algebra. <laughs> Pay attention to linear algebra. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good.